You're ready to go. Our next presentation is by Yassin Bakis uh, on image quality, metadata, fair and machine learning, AI readiness and reproducibility, a fish air example. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to present something that we have uh, built in the uh, uh, recent years. Uh, it is about a uh, biology guided neural network project and image joints projects. So we we got those two projects from NSF and uh, they, they were found very successful. So we got to continue with our project. And you see there are a lot of institutions uh, are involved in this project. And uh, what we, what we were trying to do is uh, download as much as uh, as many uh, fish images as possible and uh, put them through neural network pipeline so that we can uh, gather some results. And uh, from the this is just pro processing part. Uh, we gathered uh, information uh, data from Great Lake Invasive on the right and I dig bio on the left. I don't know why they switched. Uh, uh, so from IDIG Bio, we received half a million images, but only uh, less than 10% of them uh, were found uh, successful to work with uh, in our neural network pipelines. And most of the images were like this or like this. So on the right, uh, top right corner, this is what we are looking for to work with. And all the images were like uh, in the other forms. So. We also uh, try to see what kind of uh, files that we are dealing with and uh, less than 60% of the images, 60% uh, of the images had less than one megabyte. And then we started capturing, uh, we built a, uh, an interface to capture uh, some information about the images. We hired some contractors and we used them for uh, capturing all those information and uh, about the image. Uh, I presented this earlier in the in a TEDx meeting and uh, it, it kept growing and growing and we finally uh, built a, a workflow like this. Uh, if you have any questions, I will ask, answer in the question section. And then this is what our uh, metadata schema look like. Uh, we have multimedia, which is the main list of images, and it has uh, arc IDs, it has uh, URLs and taxon names. And then uh, we consider all the uh, data as in batch files. So if you, if you are receiving some images from a museum, then they are in a batch. Or if, you are, if it is a product of uh, image processing or neural network pipeline, then they are also in a batch. And we have image quality metadata, and you see all those are coming from the uh, metadata entry uh, form uh, that our contractors captured manually. And we still have automated image metadata that we haven't associated uh, with our uh, metadata schema yet. And how to uh, get the data? You can either upload or download through API. Uh, you can use terminal to access to our uh, database. The address is fishair.org, or you can uh, use our uh, web uh, API uh, to access to data. And you are going to receive a package like this uh, after you uh, search for some parameters. And we, you, you are going to download some data files and you will download some descriptive files that uh, describes the uh, structure of the data file and each metadata term and uh, the details and citations, etc. And we use ArcID, uh, archival resource key uh, for identifying each multimedia object, also uh, identifying different batches that are coming uh, from the museums or from the uh, pipelines or uh, once you download a data archive, uh, you will receive an arch ID that all the uh, zip archives have uh, arch ID so that uh, we provide reproducibility and reusability of the data by this way. And then uh, we, we produce, uh, this is, uh, those are results from a landmarking pipeline. So from the original museum image, uh, we, uh, we do object detection and then uh, you see a cropped bounding marks image. And then we do segmentation and based on segmentation, we extract landmarks. This is, uh, this is a common pipeline for us. 
and we keep provenance information which picture came from which other picture uh, by using a, a parent child relationship uh, information system and uh, so this is a very uh, basic uh, again on the right hand side you see the basic uh, explanation of the landmarking pipeline so with this landmarking pipeline we go through from uh, museum images to object detection and we generate some results uh, list of images are in csv files and uh, then there is a text file uh, describing what kind of parameters uh, have been used during that object detection and uh, who did that and uh, dates and stuff and uh, then we have a list of images of course uh, and then those all data goes through segmentation uh, which is the second item in the uh, pipeline and then you again uh, detail you have the details in a text file uh, who did this uh, what parameters and uh, which environment uh, and uh, information like this or whatever the creator uh, was uh, has put uh, what kind of uh, data in there and then you have the data itself uh, images uh, segmented images and then a CSV file list of images and the details uh, and then you go through landmarking so this is very basic instead of doing doing this pipeline like this we offered uh, penetrating uh, fish air uh, between each pipeline item for example uh, from object detection to segmentation we uh, process all those images, text files, and CSV files uh, through Fisher. We generate uh, first. We go to the uh, create new batch section. Uh, so we we create a batch for that incoming data, and then we assign uh, arch IDs and parental arch IDs for each items, multimedia items in that uh, image list. And then we can automatically uh, produce a list uh, for you for you to continue since it is uh, the time is important and uh, you will uh, prefer to continue with the next item of the pipeline instead of waiting for us to extract all the uh, other metadata such as image quality metadata so that you can con uh, continue with the next item. Uh, this is the uh, dashed uh, orange line in the middle of the uh, fish error part. And uh, we continue by extracting the uh, metadata from uh, uh, for the different features. And you can continue on the HPC side or GPU side uh, with the next item in your uh, pipeline. And uh, what we provide with this uh, fish air uh, platform is, first of all, it is fair. So um, almost all of the data sets are fair nowadays, so I am not going to explain this, but AI readiness is important. So once you once people, machine learning people use our system, they don't need to pre-process their uh, pipelines anymore, their data anymore. So we are eliminating a lot of time from their uh, computational cost. And, and then uh, reproducibility uh, and reusability. Uh, by using arch IDs uh, for the batches and the images, uh, you will have you can publish those data in papers by just mentioning about the arch IDs and uh, uh, batch IDs and extensibility and extendability. You don't have to uh, your taxon doesn't need to be just fish; it can be anything. Also you can have like different uh, metadata features based on the taxon taxonomic group that you are using or the data that you are using. So uh, Fisher is able to receive all kinds of uh, metadata and uh, taxonomic groups. And uh, data provenance uh, that we are uh, keeping in our uh, data set and uh, image quality features that we are using are very unique. And then in the future work, uh, we are planning to uh, include automated uh, image metadata in our system. And then image quality metadata, we are going to uh, extend our image quality metadata features because some of them doesn't work at all or machine learning people are not interested. 
and they came up with some other ideas and we are working on those right now. And AI fitness score is also very important because if you are uh, working with data sets uh, to use them in the uh, machine learning or neural network pipelines, uh, then you want either like very good quality images so that you can get uh, very good results or you want to work with some problematic images or uh, problematic data sets. You want to solve the problem. So this is all I want to talk about. Uh, this is the group that we have been working with. Uh, we are Tulane University Biodiversity Research Institute and uh, we have been working with Virginia Tech and uh, Drexel University teams together. And uh, th those are the results in within the Imageomics and uh, BGNM projects. Thank you all. Ourselves. Uh, so there's plenty of time for questions. <laughs> Hello, uh, David Fichtmiller from the Botanic Garden Botanical Museum in Berlin. I was wondering for the uh, segmented images where you mark the individual parts, um, what uh, format are you using to save that information? Is there a, real, a special file type for that or just uh, as images? For the, for the segmentation part or landmarking part? So segmentations are, uh, they come in uh, uh, flat JPEG or PNG files. So they are just painted. This is what they have produced. This is not what we produce. This is the Excel pro uh, group produced. So they are just painted uh, sections on the fish. And uh, we extract those uh, areas that have that certain uh, color. And then uh, Bahadur is here, so he is uh, dealing with those kind of issues. And then finally, we have like set of coordinates that resemble uh, that uh, is associated with that segment, particularly. This is how we keep it. They, they are just x y coordinates, but uh, once once we start uh, working with uh, landmarks then we go through all those areas they are uh, uh, close contour areas and then we go to like top left or uh, whatever like a uh, frontal lobe or those kind of things Bahadur? Yeah. i can add something for this one actually they have the text file uh, or the corresponding PNG, png file but they are in text format and including the rgb color codes and pixels it's a very huge file for it simple comparing the PNG file, but they provided the text file uh, as we wished before, but I didn't use that. So it's a very huge file. It's hard to work with. But from PNG file, you can extract the, uh, all the RGB co codes and coordinates to the text file also. It's easy if you want. Yes, uh, Wout Alling from uh, Naturalis Biodiversity Center in the Netherlands. Uh, what I don't understand well is what the advantages of uh, creating segmentation images over just uh, annotating the image with regions of, of interest. Can you repeat again? So what is the advantage of creating new images with, uh, with uh, the segmented parts of the image uh, over uh, just uh, annotating the image with regions of interest? So you, you can do both, but uh, we had these segmented images already. So we wanted to build uh, another item in the pipeline to extract uh, some more data from those segmented images. So we, we have another project that is, uh, again, Bahadur currently working on, uh, extracting landmarks directly from the museum images or bonding box images, not segmentation images, because there are some uh, mistakes in the segmentations and it affects the landmarking. Yeah. Hi, um, Rikea from the Norwegian GBIF node. I was uh, just wondering, you said that your system is fair. I was wondering if you publish your data to GBIF because I was thinking your metadata schema, it looks like a lot of the terms you could use for it could be Darwin core terms, which would make it a bit more standardized. So we are, we are still developing our uh, system, our platform. And we are uh, extracting a lot of metadata, but we don't know which ones are useful, which ones are not. 
So we are trying to understand, uh, like uh, making some correlations with the uh, AI fitness scores and uh, metadata terms so that we can decide which of those terms should be used for uh, something like uh, calculating image quality or AI fitness or those kind of things. Once we are done with all those uh, questions that we have, then we are going to, certainly we are going to associate our data uh, with uh, all the repositories. And uh, our one of our aim is uh, when you start downloading, when you try to download something from IDIC Bio, it came up with a lot of uh, not very useful data set because you don't know the content of the data. So what, what kind of objects are there in that image? Or uh, like, is this really a fish image? Is there a fish object in that image? Or it is a note about that fish species? So you, there is no information. So we are trying to extract all those kind of informations. And finally, when we are done with that, we will uh, give them a feedback and uh, we will tell them, okay, we extracted those metadata. Maybe you should have this in your repository also. Yeah, okay. Let's begin transition. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>